This is a delicious loaf of bread. It is only made from flour, salt, water, and yeast, and that's it. I'm going to show you how I made this exact loaf of bread over the next few minutes. Enjoy. Today's Tuesday, and my first step is I just take it out, mix it up a little bit, let it get a little oxygenated, and now I'm going to give it a snack. And when you have a starter, a starter is just really made up of water and flour. That's all it is. And yeast gets in there. And then once you got yeast in there and it starts bubbling away, you're just going to keep feeding it flour and water. That's it. Once a week. I busted out my scale. Okay. And I'm just going to give it 25 grams of water, 25 grams of flour. That's it. Okay. So 25 grams of water. Bam. 25, check it. You mix. I'm using this knife. How exciting. Now I'm adding 25G of AP, all purpose flour. So I've got, again, with my scale, I just zeroed it out, and then I got 25. Woo! Combine that all up. The way I'm going to track how much it, it changes is I've got this rubber band. Around the uh, around the container, and I just kind of nudge the rubber band so that it's at the level of the starter. And this way, when I come back later and I see that it's up there, I'll be like, "Okay, we're ready for the next step." So I'm leaving this out right now. My thermometer on the wall is telling me it's almost 80 degrees inside this apartment. So I'm gonna just gonna lay this lid right on top. All right, that is it. Three hours later. It is rising a whole bunch. It's getting all bubbly on the inside. And now I'm ready to do my serious feeding. Let's see if you can, if there's bubbles. All kinds of bubbles. Yeah, bubbles! Okay. Sorry, the camera's in the dish drying rack. That's a knife. So, check this out. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make my production starter. So this means that this is the starter that's going to actually be used to make the bread. And I'm going to put 35 grams of starter into this little plastic container. 15, 20, 29, 33, oh, 36. I'm okay with that. Now I'm going to do 36 grams of water. Boom. And for this, I'm using cool water because it's a hot day. It's still just over. Now it's over 80 degrees. So I'm mixing that together. And then I'm going to add about 36 grams of rye flour. So I could use white flour. That's fine. It's just that I want to make a rye-based bread. And rye is going to feed the yeast a lot. The yeast is going to get super psyched with rye. So we're going up to... 20. But anyway, this means that I have basically equal parts water and equal parts flour. The starter that I first added in there, that's 35 grams, that's essentially half water and half flour. Now, this is also half water and half flour. So this is a rye-fed starter. Now, when it comes time to making my dough, I'm going to use this whole thing. So that's what I got. Mixed together, this is my production starter. Now, the reason I do that, the reason that I don't just feed rye to my whole starter in the first place, is that this guy, this one's going to live in the fridge, and I'm going to use it next week. So now this has been fed, and it's alive, and it's doing pretty well. I stick it back into the fridge. I take this, my production starter, and now that it's almost 10 o'clock in the morning, three hours after I did that little micro feeding, this little thing that took me just a couple of minutes to do is going to sit right out here on the counter. And when I come back in a few hours, it's going to have risen a whole bunch. It's just going to chill out here and do its thing. And that's it. We'll see what happens then. Here's an extra bonus, extra credit maneuver. While we let our production starter do its thing, we're going to prehydrate the rest of the flour 
And this way, when it comes time to mix that together with the starter, it's gonna be like so easy. So what I'm doing is uh, I've got my bowl on my scale and I've already calculated that, you know, for the way that I make bread and for the size loaf that I make, I do 400 grams of flour, okay? Then I base everything else on that 400 grams of flour. So what I'm gonna do here is, since I know that my starter is gonna be 100 grams total, and I know that half of that is the flour and half of that's the water, I'm gonna make the rest of my dough right now. And I know I don't need 400 grams of flour. I already got 50 grams in that starter, so I'm gonna do 350 grams of flour. And I also know that I wanna make a 78% hydration dough which means for every 100 grams of flour, I got 78 grams of water. So I know that if I take that, 78% of 400 is 312, and if I subtract 50, then that's 262. So I know that in this bowl, I'm gonna put 262. 259, 263, I'm okay with that, because I know that I'm gonna lose some stuff as I do all this. Um, so to that, I'm going to add 350 grams, and I'm going to use just bread flour. Sometimes I'll add like 300 of this type of flour, and then I'll add like 50 grams of whole wheat. But I don't have any whole wheat with me, so I got to suck it up. That's what I got. So this is prehydrated. This is water and flour together. It's a simple dough. So while I let my starter do its thing, I'm gonna also let this flour and water mixture do its thing. It's gonna make my life way easier when I come back later. Another thing that's gonna make my life easier is this uh, shower cap I got from some hotel. <laughs> uh, but this is a trick I found from somebody on one of these bread forums on the internet. Well now, time has just flown by and it is about four hours since I last mixed up that production starter and hydrated the flour for the dough. And now I'm feeling like, you know what? It's nice and warm outside. It's probably ready to rock. The starter seems to have expanded a whole bunch. It's not really all bubbly because it's rye. So it's not going to get all crazy, crazy bubbly. But it definitely looks bigger. It definitely looks like there is uh, greater volume in this thing right now. So all I'm going to do is combine that with that hydrated flour, the flour and water that I already did. And you know what? I may as well weigh this sucker to make sure that I'm getting 100 grams in there. Oh, I think it's probably going to be exactly 100 grams. So here we go. Boom, boom, boom. 100 grams! Yeah! Alright, great. So I've got 100 grams of starter. And all I'm going to do is gently fold it in. And then here is the real fun part. And I'm just... Ugh! Dumping it onto this marble slab I got. Now to, that I've got that dough sitting here, I'm gonna start to gently fold it together. And I kind of pick it up from the bottom with the scraper and then just pull it over itself. Once the starter is all spread out evenly through this thing, we'll add the salt. And I'm just weighing out 10 grams. 10 grams. So all I gotta do is help it pick up all the salt. Once again, get this stuff on there. And now it goes into the refrigerator and we'll take a look at it in a few hours. It has been several hours now. Time to take this sucker out of the fridge. We're gonna do some gentle folds. And the best way for me to do that, I think, is to give a better view. And all I'm gonna do is pull out a corner of it and pull it down. Pull out a corner of it and pull it down. Pull out this corner, fold it over. And these are called folds. Just taking it right out of the fridge and Put in some folds. And all that's doing is building strength. So now the dough balls staying together a little bit better. Seriously, like simple as that. That's it. A couple little folds. Take it back in the bowl. I'm gonna let it go to sleep. 
I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm gonna cover it over. And I'm gonna put it back into the refrigerator overnight. It's the morning. Just woke up five seconds ago. But I know that the first thing I do in the morning is just a couple of folds to that sweet, sweet, delicious dough. And again, all we're doing the same thing I did last night. Scrape that dough out of here. It's definitely a solid mass at this point. It has developed gluten overnight. Not even flouring my surface. All I'm doing is stretch and fold. Stretch and fold. Stretch and fold. Stretch and fold. Boom. That's it. That's all I'm doing it. Once. And it's a really wet dough, so I guess I have to play with it a little bit to pick it up. Back to the fridge. Alright, now it's the end of the day. It is about 11.20. And I'm pulling the dough out for yet another stretch and fold. Pulling it out and folding it over. Pulling it out and folding it over. Number three, out and over. And once again, building up the strength. I'm just going to keep on doing this every night and every morning until I'm ready to bake the dough into bread. Boom. That's it. And in the bowl. Keeping its shape a lot better now. And once again, shower cap and into the fridge. Now it's the morning again. I'm going to do the last, maybe the last straight up stretch and fold situation. I think I'm going to bake this tomorrow. It's really just waiting until it smells right. And until I have time. Here's how it's gonna go. Pull out the dough on the side, fold it over in the inside, pull out the dough this way, fold it over in, and then from the east, and then from the west. And now it, it is building strength yet again. It's a legit dough ball. Takes a couple of seconds, and that's it. Back with the hat on, and back into the fridge. All right, it's time for the final moments. This is the pre-shaping phase. I'm gonna take this sucker out. I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on it, just enough flour so I can get under there. Fold over, fold over, fold over. I'm trying to push it down a little bit. Okay, now we're going to give this about 20 minutes to hang out. And then we're going to do the final shaping. That's the pre shape now I'm just going to flip the bowl over the top of it to keep it airtight and we'll come back in about 20 minutes for the final shaping after 20 minutes I'm really just going to take that dough and I'm just going to again dust it with a little bit of flour I'm going to make it mobile I'm going to grab it with my hands And I'm going to kind of use the scraper to just drag it in. I'm just going to shape it like this. I'm pulling, I'm just pulling it in. 
Boom. That's it. All right, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna take my banneton and I'm gonna fill that with some flour, a little bit of rice flour. I'm gonna use a little bit of rye flour. Just because the, the rice flour, it's not going to stick too much to the rice flour. Problem is, rice flour tastes bad. It just doesn't taste great. So. So I got that. And I'm going to add in a little bit of. That's pretty generously coated. Put a little bit more mixture of flour on the top of my dough. And I'm just gonna pick that up and let it sit in the banneton. And it's gonna sit in here overnight See, right now, I'm going to let it sit out just for a couple of hours until I got to go to bed. And then I'm going to stick this sucker in the fridge and let it just chill out overnight. I'm going to use a rubber band on this just because my little hairnet thing is getting loose. But yeah, that's it. I'm going to let that sit out for a couple of hours and rise. And then I'm going to let it go in the fridge overnight just because I'm not going to bake it tonight. Okay, it is the morning of the bake. I took the dough out of the refrigerator about 6.30 this morning. Now it's about um, 9, just 9.15 maybe. Uh, so it's been sitting out for a while. I actually put it back in for about 10 minutes just because I was worried that it was starting to get too, too big and gassy. I don't really remember what it looked like before. I know it was definitely less gassy than this. Look at that sucker. Yeah. So, um... Oh, smells awesome. Anyway, here's what I have going on. About 45 minutes ago, I turned the oven to 450 degrees, and I left um, my cooking vessel inside the oven. So I have a few different vessels I use for, for baking. One of them is this clay cloche, given to me by my brother and sister-in-law. You bake the bread inside after you've preheated the whole thing. Another thing is, I have a baking steel, which is inside the oven right now, so it's too hot for me to touch. And the third thing is the one that I'm using, which is essentially a Dutch oven. So, it's two parts. It's a uh, top and a bottom. Those have been preheating. I want them crazy, crazy hot. And in fact, one thing I'm going to do before I start baking is I'm going to put a little bit of water in the bottom part, and it's going to start to steam. I want that steam to be inside the oven, um, and I want it to be mainly inside the thing that I'm using to bake. But let's let that do its thing for just a, about a minute while I prepare this dough to bake. So I'm going to make sure that the sides, and put some flour on my fingers so I don't stick to it. I'll make sure that the sides pull away. Looks like they are. This is the real tense moment because all your work for all these days could be for naught if the dough gets stuck inside. So you got two options. One of the options is to put the dough onto a peel and then use the peel to slide the dough into the oven. Or another option is to just dump this directly onto the hot surface. I'm nervous about that because if the top sticks, I've got nowhere to go. And then I also can't score it. So, and also to just make sure so you can see this better, I'll do it up here and I'll do it on the peel, okay? It's not my favorite way to do it, but I'm doing it for you. I'm gonna use another type of flour. I'm gonna use semolina. Because I like it. And it's gonna get toasty. Um, so I'm sprinkling that on the dough itself. Okay, and I'm gonna sprinkle just a little bit of it on the board. 
I don't want too much stuff, but I do want it to be able to roll off the peel onto that uh, surface. So right now I'm going to check the baking surface to see if it's... Yeah, all the water's gone. And I'm even going to put a little bit more on there. And that water will be gone within moments. Here we go. Let's do this thing. Okay, so I'm going to gently unload the dough on here. And you've got to work fast. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to score it. I'm going to do right down the center. I'm going to score it with this serrated bread knife. And then I'm going to do four little ticks around the outside. One, two, three, four. Okay. And that's it. Now I'm going to load this into the oven. I'm going to gently push that stuff away. But you see how it's already starting to... Oh no, where's my spatula? Uh, it's already starting to change shape. Starting to get too flat. So... Okay, into the oven. Oh, son of a gun. Oh, put that with some flour just so it's even. Okay, I'm gonna pull this sucker out a little bit and I'm gonna load straight. All right, and now the top goes back on it and it's hot, so be careful. Into there. Turn off the light. It's still at 450. In 20 minutes, we're gonna take the lid off just to see what it's looking like, and we're gonna leave the lid off to finish the browning process. Okay, 20 minutes is up, which is kind of sad because it means that I have to take this phone off the wall, and I have like four pieces of scotch tape holding it up, and it's like really well done, I, I gotta say. Uh, but this is the big moment, the big reveal to see if we got enough spring inside the oven. So we just lift up the top here real carefully. Oh my God, it is like a miracle. Okay, now we gotta close this sucker. I always just give it a little bit of a shake to make sure it's not stuck and a little bit of a turn. Oh my God, it looks gorgeous. Okay, I have major news. The timer says that we still got about six minutes left, but I just took a peek inside and the bread is done. Well, you're gonna take it out. This is the big moment. This is the moment. That is the real deal. That's actually the bread that happened. I'm gonna take it right out of this sucker. Here's where it kind of folded over itself because it was so wet. Uh, and I put a, a rack from the oven, uh, not a hot rack, a cool rack from the oven sitting here over my sink so this sucker can breathe for a little bit. But just take a look at this. This is absolutely one of the prettiest breads I've ever baked. No joke. It's got that nice little floral look on the top. See, we scored it because that would let the dough rise more. If you didn't score it, it would be more compact. It wouldn't have risen as high. And this is what we're looking for. This kind of, this shape on the side. And uh, anyway, I'm very excited about this bread. And boom, we've got that going on on the inside, which is awesome. All these nice big air pockets that were filled with gas, and now they are filled with deliciousness. So, I always store the bread so that the bottom is closed off. So usually I'll stick it in a paper bag with the bottom kind of resting on the table. And for cutting the bread, it's always a good idea to put it on its end like this and cut straight down. Leaving you with delicious, beautiful things of bread.